are you today? I'm good, good. Let's feel a little bit under the weather, but uh, really, you know, I'm coming, I'm coming, coming around. It is the season. It is, man. There's a lot of people sick right now. Other than an ear infection recently, I've been lucky. But yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, lucky stars. Uh, I'll get sick tomorrow because oh. I said it. That's anyway, right. yeah, knock on wood. Slate us up. All right, we got uh, season one, episode nine, the homestead. What do you call that? I didn't write it on there. Okay, the homestead. Homestead stables. Do that again. Clean, clean sound. Clean I talked sound. It. I clocked over it. All right. Camera rolls. Sound rolls. Speed. Room tone. Speed. Speed. Speeding. All right. Hot what? mic. <clears throat> Well, here we go. Let's do it. Uh, Black Dog Elvis, uh, something or I uh, can't talk. Here we go. Right here. It just gets better and better. You know, I just can't, I love that little 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 ditty. Branded sound. Yeah, that's our sound, man. You hear those little ding, little ding, ding, ding. That's uh, that's what we are. You know, you can close your eyes and and still still hear it. That didn't make any sense, did it? <laughs> sorry, sorry. We're we're both uh, texting Grayson right now just in last minute fashion. Wade okay. woke and <laughs> oh no, she had no. Grayson's currently feeding her baby. Sorry, guys, tough time, tough hour for ah, for dang. mom. Well, that's okay. She, that's our fault. You know, she didn't. Yeah, well, that's all right. You know, she uh, she's got kids. You know, m- multiple, and uh, her G, I mean her her husband Garrett is, uh, you know, he's out working working in the fields. Well, then, unless something changes while we're talking here, no, uh, no Grayson guest appearance. I That's know right. I lied to you guys. I said I'd make it happen. Well, we, we tried, but, you know, Mother Nature and motherhood got in the way. And, I mean, uh, a fresh baby, too. It doesn't know, get more hectic than that. You know, she, she was, this was her first episode. I, as, I mean, actual episode, this yeah. is either, even though this is number nine. Right. The yeah. Homestead Stables. Yeah, these were – you were – were you, you said at one point during the episode you were 57. 57 years old. Boy, I was young. That was, I mean, 10 years ago for all of us. Yeah. What year, so what year was that then? Ten, I mean, it was... Uh, uh, 12. 2012. Yeah. 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 Which was great. So Grayson's first job with us was... That was it, Winter yeah. of 2012. It was brutal, but... Uh, yeah. Anyway, well, we'll get into that. Uh, <laughs> we will. Oh, let's start with comments. Let's I, do that. Oh, one. first off, by the way, sorry guys for uh, not having video last week. I dropped the ball. I think I deleted, like, formatted the memory card too soon or something and and lost it. And then it took me four extra days to post the episode. I've you had know, a really that was one week. thing that really scared me. Not scared me, but always concerned me. I knew these guys were professionals, the, the Trailblazer crew and mm. the cameras, but when you record this stuff... You got to make sure that the O N O F F button's working and that you're capturing all this stuff because if you don't, you can't do it again. No, and that I mean, and and you you think you go all the way through it and you lost all that. And I had I I know I saw Clark McCarthy Miller uh, pull his hair out a little bit, worrying that you know one of the cards wasn't formatting or something, and and we lost all we lost it. And we luckily we didn't, but that was always a concern because you know once you do it, it's done. Especially with that stuff that we did. Oh yeah, you know, it's like it's you don't things you falling don't, over or you just don't you know, repeat it. You can't go extractions, back. Extractions, you know, yeah. you can't go back. Hey guys, it didn't get it. To, didn't get it today. Let's go back. I said nope. Got to got to start all over again, doing something else. Yeah, and so production wise, a non scripted show like ours is tough. I mean, even here filming at the shop, uh, you know, I on some of my cameras have two cards that I can write to at the same time, just in case one fails. You know, I back up footage. I, I built a custom server based off YouTube videos I've seen to avoid that exact problem where, like, we do something cool and we captured it. And if it's gone, I can't and guess what? do it again. It still happens. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> and I lost the video last week. We're so. only human. <laughs> that's, that's, our, that's our fault and our, but, our blessing. But as of recording now, the, the last week's episode has only been up for a few days, and we still have 14 comments. So wow. I get to go through here and Try see. Try a couple of them. See what they said. Uh, and also, uh, I've, um, we're starting to people are starting to come in the shop and saying they're watching the the uh, the YouTube uh, podcast. Really? Yeah, starting to get a little bit of 
in person up front uh, thank yous. So cool. It was kind of fun. I said, it's just me and Tate and John, you know. Well, it's hard. It's been hard to gather uh, feedback. And in fact, we last week we led with that piece asking people for feedback. And are you liking it? Are you not liking it? Yeah. It us. seems like this person responded to that. Jeffrey Stapleton said, hey, guys, it's great. An hour-ish seems to work about right. I enjoy being able to see you when I get a chance to peek at the screen versus the original version. And I really enjoy revisiting the show episodes and the behind-the-scenes conversation. Nice. That's what we do it for. That's it, yeah. And for us, really. Do you get any... Uh, do you get have you people giving you any feedback in person? At the well, show? not not that they just say they they've watched it and liked it and wants to do to keep doing it. So you know, with cool. that in mind, we'll do it as long as uh, we can. That's right. We, we got 147, 143 to go uh, episode. So minus nine. Do the 136. Math. There you go. Uh, with with Jane, love the show, but like the video part the best. It's great hearing about what happened. Love seeing you guys interact. Uh, well, there you go. Dilly Dilly Gogs makes stuff. Says uh, I love it. I'm a big fan of long podcasts. So the longer, the better. You have been accompanying me in the workshop. It's great. Feel like you guys are just in the next room chatting. All the best, Dale from Wales. Hey, Wales, UK. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dilly Gogs sounds like a British thing. Anyway. Oh, okay. That's how I consume podcasts a lot of times. It's on in the background while I'm doing other stuff. I, I do it while driving. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's such a good way to, yeah. to make the Just hours to go eat, by. Eats the time up as long yeah. as you're not not yelling at the at the radio or, or the device. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people seem to love the video. So sorry, I dropped the ball on the video part. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna miss one every now and again. Uh, oh yeah, this person, uh, ambulant car gal, she's commented before. Uh, it would be great to see some BTS photos, behind the scenes photos, if you have any for the episode you were talking about. I go and watch the episode after you talk about it on the streaming platform I subscribe to. I love how she was careful not to say which streaming platform she subscribes to. Uh, there was a point in our travels that I started to diligently photograph the jobs, and I don't think I had yet started to do that. No, you were you were still learning your chops. I was busy. Yeah, yeah, actually working. Giving me shit. That's what you're busy doing, <laughs> as I remember. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You know? <laughs> I laid it on thick. It, it, it was like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I had this, yeah, I'm learning. This is really a psychological study yeah. on, on 18, 19-year-old me. I, I had a lot of, cynic, a lot of cynicism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure this is not it, it's news funny, to you. It's funny how age will cure that. Yeah. You know, because. I was fiery. I was well, you knew easily it all. agitated. Yeah. You know, you knew it all. And, yeah. and we didn't tell you differently. So there you go. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we I just guess like, I couldn't handle it. You know, we said we stick around long enough. Well, uh, he'll figure it out. Yeah. You know? I'm and, sure uh, there were many conversations had about me. No, believe it or not, there weren't. Uh, you know, every once in a while I'd, I'd get my, my dander up, but. I put it away pretty quick and, and uh, went and beat my head on a wall. <laughs> That's good. Because I probably what I deserved was a slap well, in you the know, face. No, I'd never do that. The reason is, you know, you were my son or are my son and you were an employee. So that's a, that's a, a mixed, that's a, a perfect recipe for confrontation. Sure. And, and, uh, yeah. And, and a lot of that did uh, kind of mess me up in the long run, you know, because like, you want to make dad proud, but you also want to make your boss happy, and it's kind of yeah, yeah. it's kind of two different. It's things. schizophrenic, is what it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's probably, probably some Freudian name for it all. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, headache. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It's what made it's what made it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's they cut all that all that. If there was any fighting, they cut it all out. Yeah, there was a few ones. Yeah, I remember. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. Season 1, Episode 9, The Homestead Stables. And if anybody hasn't been to the homestead, it's up in Bath County, which is uh, north of here. Yeah, Hot Springs, Virginia. Built yeah. in 18... The home, homestead itself was built in the late 1700s. It was a spa originally. And I yeah. guess still is. Still is. Hot Springs. Expanded on yeah. it. Uh, built The stables were built in 1892, so about 100 years later. And it was about a thirty thousand square foot building, as you it, said. It was it was huge. I mean, there was probably forty stalls. These for all the the carriage horses. Uh, this was the valet VIP parking building. Yeah, well, back in the day, you know, they, they would, their horses they would probably come in on a train or something, and then they uh, they didn't fly in at that time. Yeah, even though you know, 
planes were almost there. Yeah, 40s and, and 50s, they came along. But. Yeah, there, there's an airport on top of the mountain now. But uh, back then, it was train and wagon. And then when the gas motor really got going, you know, yeah. they, they would truck in. Model Model T's. But it's, it was a, it's a gorgeous valley and uh, a, a great uh, uh, golf course up there. It's uh, Sam Sneed. Mm. Uh, uh, one of the, one was of a the golfer, right? famous famous golfers from that area, and that's was that was his home course. Uh, and there's um, the Cascades, the Upper and Lower Cascades, uh, and the home course. That were I've only got to play it a couple times, but uh, really nice. Uh, went and played with old uh, Uncle D's, Uncle Dan Curtis, Dan my, Curtis. My, my Titleist rep. There you go. He took me around every once in a while and showed me a good time with uh, golf. Show me the the VIP of golf. It was pretty fun. sure the clubs I have are yours, and they, they are. Those were the ones you got from Dan, I guess, huh? or through Dan. No, I, well, so through, mostly Titleist. Yeah, stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shh, shh. <laughs> so, those, I mean, paid for them. Those were they, Dan's old clubs. And real money. Yeah, yeah. that's right. From one person. We traded. We bartered. Yeah, but it was a. It's a gorgeous valley. Uh, uh, really known for its uh, hospitality. We've been up there a couple times since then. A lot of people go. Uh, That's the main export of hot springs. Yeah, it seems. yeah. And this time of year, they have a little uh, uh, snow course or uh, ski hill. Oh yeah. And I've never skied it because you know, by the time you make two or three turns, you're on the bottom already. Yeah. But uh, not very but, high. Uh, I think Robert and taught his taught his girls to ski up there because it's oh, cool. it has a little it's a little pony hill, a little pommel lift they call it, where a little little disc on a pole you oh, you yeah. ride up to the top Put between your legs. Yeah. It pulls you up. Oh yeah, it's it's very uh, European. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, we're heading to the the hot springs in the winter, and before we get all into the into the the salvage, we'll go through the episode chronologically. We started that was all came out in the round table, but we start off with a build, uh, which I noticed uh, starting to establish a formula that you follow pretty regularly in the builds, where it's sort of like. This may have been real or not, but you kind of start by wandering through the warehouse and going, "All right, what do we? What has been here for a while? What do we need to get rid of? Right? Uh, what's what could be something else?" And well, so that's what how this started. That was kind of obviously kind of set up a little bit, but uh, there's been a couple times we didn't film it typically, but I would grab the producer, whoever was there doing it, mainly Clark, and say, hey, "I don't have a I don't have a build, you know. I mean, let's go find one." Yeah. And you know, we have yeah. Yeah. we are going to make a bed, a bar. A table, you know, something, you know, a sink base or whatever bench. So we, you know, we had a, you know, a couple things to make it uh, to give us an idea what to do. And then at that point, we we find stuff that looks like it wants to be that. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's the that's the insanity of it all. It, it's it's not seeing what it is; it's what it wants to be. Yeah. So it's you're con- the you're the conduit. Yeah. So vehicle. you know, everything we have is. Uh, Non-binary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's neither one or the other. Exactly. It's both. It's salvage fluid. Yeah, salvage <laughs> fluid. I like that. We'll make that one a part of our, our dogma. But this is a cool one. Uh, we had Sweet Courtney uh, with us. Uh, miss, miss her. She's still around town, but she did all the, the finish work for us. Courtney, yeah. Kern, Courtney Kern, quite a quite an artist these days. One of our first paint experts. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she started painting for us, and before we had our own line, and um, and even after. But um, I saw this as a as a bench, you know, and, and headboards yeah. and footboards are they kind of avail themselves to a bench, but you just have to condense them and drop them down and modify yeah. them. But use the good parts, which we did. And you know, it was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, tiger you know, oak, either veneer or solid tiger. That oak. was it's, it went around like that's typically veneer. Yeah, but uh, beautiful. It was gorgeous, great shape. Of course, veneers back then were quarter inch thick, and yeah. you know, veneers now are you can measure them with a micron, right? Micrometer, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever that is. <clears throat> you had it, I know. Uh, uh, but so it is beautiful, and but you know what's funny? I noticed this build particularly uh, was really fast. I mean, from concept to most of it done, the on-screen time in the episode was like two minutes. What? Maybe it's because the salvage was so the, big in this episode, was, but they like really crammed through the build on they this only, one. You know, we only have 22 minutes to fill, yeah. and the rest of it's advertising. Uh, so we left the – we let the well, obviously, we don't have a lot of control over it. We have yeah. a little bit. Uh, let the producers and the editors do their thing. And we had, this was such a cool salvage job because it had so many different parts to it from 
uh, all the stuff we did from, you know, yeah. uh, saving the boards and the stalls to that. So, yeah, that's probably what happened is it, it just – it's, it's amazing how fast we can build stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I've never seen you work quicker. Longest <laughs> one, five minutes. You know, that's yeah. the longest one I've ever done. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, snails, I mean, snail's pace. I'm sweating minutes. at that yeah. point. You know, five <laughs> minutes. I've worked all day on this thing <laughs> yeah. where we've really worked a couple of days on it, really. You know, because yeah. we, we get them to a certain point. We'd always call them the, the 50%. We've, if, if we got it 50% done and you can kind of see – what it's going to be, then at that point, that's when we cut and, and, and go to, they cut, put, put yeah. salvage or whatever's next in and go from there. Yeah. We, we have finished a lot of stuff over the years. Like in many cases we would have to come back in all actuality and undo part of what we did to then go back and do it right. Be, Sometimes with yeah with enough time yeah use a, a bigger screw there instead of a little pin nail mm -hmm. you know uh, that's you'd the, see some reveals where we're like holding up a corner like yeah. see see yeah, let get it, it you let it you let it go and it falls down yeah <laughs> but but the wow was uh, kind of interesting this was something that you and I presented and got from the uh, from the the hat shop it's really a dry cleaner downtown the haberdashery i don't know was it a haberdashery i don't know i just know that's what it's called well not hats a haberdasher is a i guess it's everything it's, it's a hat it's, store isn't it it's it's a hat not, haberdasher is not the hat store oh. haberdasher is a outfitter of of garments got it and a, a haberdasher i was uh uh, citing one of quentin tarantino's movies the might the, have been uh, the uh hateful eight did you ever see that uh-uh the entire movie took place in an old place called Minnie's Haberdashery. Hey, well, it's, I mean, hats were part of a haberdashery. Well, okay, so it was like a, a fine clothing store. This was yeah. a, yeah, but this is a, a, a hat press. Yeah. So they could make a hat or they could recondition a hat on this. And, and we, we toted it down three flights of stairs, as I remember. I, I don't remember the actual removal. Was that real? We went and got we it? We did. Yeah. We did. It was on the third floor of this building that... And I wanted, Which building in was in town? It was right down on on Campbell. Uh, it's still there. A one, A one dry cleaner or something like that. Oh, uh, it's and it's right from the right. Anyway, it's right on the corner, almost on yeah. the corner. And uh, uh, a lady owned it. Uh, uh, and I, I'd ask her. You know, we we were going we were there for somebody else that owned the building, and and Got they it. said we could go and buy. And we bought the salvage rights to whatever was there. We went digging, and we found that piece, and that was a really cool piece. It turned out that there was a guy there's, – there's guys out there still making hats, by the way. Oh, sure. You know, I bet you there's been a bit of a revival, honestly. Yeah, and I think what he did – I don't know if he – it would be nice to find out if he ever ever uh, uh, reconditioned it, but he put it in his hat shop you cool. know, as a – as a, a display, oh, but perfect. it could have been refurbished because all it was was uh, a, a turning mechanism that locked the the gear to turn the hat, and then an iron to to shape the hat. Mm -hmm. And you put the mold that what was on there was a mold, and I wanted all the rest of the molds, but the lady wouldn't let me have them. Oh, really? Yeah, and they were all hanging on the wall. And I was like, Hey, I want those, and she said, No, <laughs> no soup no, for you. No. <laughs> it was it was kind of fun. I didn't beg. I just uh, said, "Well, if it ever if you ever get rid of these or want to get rid of them or sell them, give me a call." Was this for steaming uh, already made hats or actually forming them in the first place? I think it's probably a little bit of both. And again, somebody can that builds hats can tell us this. I saw this on TV once how they do it, but it's you know how they spin the felt and. Yeah, and, and shape the hat onto. It's a pretty cool process. Yeah, there's like ironing and steaming involved. Uh, yeah, like a lot of a lot it. of a lot of rubbing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as I remember, Just rubbing my hat. You know, rubbing the hat, rubbing one, rubbing a hat on. <laughs> uh, and it was, but it was pretty cool. So I, what happened is we sent sold it to a guy in Colorado. Oh, I don't yeah. know if it went to Aspen or Vail or some place like that, but he had a hat shop. It's and, awesome. and he he bought it. We shipped it to him, and I never heard another word. Perfect. But that's where it was going. That's what he told me. So you know, everything has a home, eventually. And it took us a while to find that one, but really, he found us. Uh, we didn't really put it out there too too much for people to see, which is that's awesome. Our problem. <laughs> and, and yeah, right. it's our fault. <laughs> How do you sell stuff? I don't know. By accident, maybe? Why don't they know it's here? Yes. Well, have you posted it anywhere? Mm, no. 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 <laughs> well, well, the interweb was just getting going back then. That's true. That's you know? true. So it, it, Black Dog was kind of, kind of 
we're, on it. We early. were on the edge of it. Yeah, we started. I mean, are you, all the eBay stuff was like in eBay's infancy. Yeah, you know, like that's how we researched. Late 90s, that, that, early 2000s. eBay was our research platform. It's the only way to comp stuff. Yeah, in a, and in now the there's other world. stuff like uh, what's the one wh- worth it worth? What's it worth or something worth point worth point? Oh, this is news to me. There's a there's a, 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 a site we subscribe to that is uh, you can see what people are are uh, selling and and estimating and pricing stuff at so you can cool. get, so you can get real time comps on stuff and that's the hardest part you know when we first started our business we got one house on 21 Highland Avenue and and we didn't know what we were doing i mean we knew what we knew it was beautiful and and so we we took pictures of it in our on our early picture taking and we went to eBay and started researching what other things like this we're going for so we yeah. could make a, a somewhat of an educated offer yeah you know you don't want to say well i'll give you a thousand for that and it's worth 200 now you now you're in a hole you know now you got to hold on to it long enough and, and wait for the market to give you a thousand get break even yeah yeah which so, it, it may not <laughs> it doesn't a lot <laughs> but that's okay i got a warehouse for those pieces and that that's what was hard about bringing someone new into black dog was you especially and me after a while knowing generally what certain things were worth you know like whether you kind of think about size weight rarity usefulness condition condition, and it all sort of like runs through this roughly established formula in your head and then you're like well well, Between you, three and five hundred bucks, you always, and it's hard to teach that. Well, it's hard, it, it's it is. You got to be around long enough, and you always hope that they pay. They they negotiate less than you would, mm. and most of the time now they do. And I walk into the to the shipping and receiving and sometimes see something cool. I said, "Who got this?" And they're never going like, "Oh no, we paid too much." I said, "What'd you pay for it? Twenty bucks." Awesome. Good job. Nice. <laughs> Your team's well, learning. Yeah. Well, they got some. We got good people working. Yeah, for you us, do. And, um, and Nate and Bethany and Jody and. Eric. Krista and Eric, they're all they're all doing their thing. You know, it's a it's a negotiating. You you make your money on the buy, right? So if you pay too much, you're already going to be in a hole because you're going to have to give it love, and love costs money. Ain't that the yeah, truth? That's a, that's a, there's a mouthful <laughs> right there. Oh man, yeah. But anyway, it's a cool hat forming machine. It, it looked like it was inside. It wasn't rusty. It was still greasy. So oh, it could have yeah. could have been re- restored. Yeah, it was working. It would crank around. But that was a fun. That was a fun one. You know, every once in a while we find one like that. Uh, but the well, salvage. Should we get into the snow? Yeah, yeah. The it was cold. I mean, I've been cold before, but I was prepared for this. It was cold. Well, we'll set the scene right. So we're in Southwest Virginia, right near the Blue Ridge Mountains, and snow in Roanoke. Roanoke itself, not that this job was in Roanoke, but Roanoke itself is a bit, and it's sort of a bowl. It's in a valley. So. Yeah. Uh, if it's if 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 the snow makes it into the valley, it really stays. Well, that's because the the weather systems back up against the mountain. If it's yeah. coming in from the north, we're usually pretty well protected. But if it comes in from the southwest, yeah, we're going to get nailed because it'll push up against the mountain and kind of squeeze all that moisture out. And usually, if it's cold enough like it is today, um, it's going to snow. Meteorologists call that the push and squeeze. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like. Sounds like every morning. It's a very technical process. <laughs> the push and squeeze. Every morning. <laughs> what are you doing, Mike? I got the old push and squeeze going. <laughs> I'll let you alone. I'll leave you alone for that. You got that nice uh, bidet, too. That's, good. That's what, good for uh, a push and squeeze. Washlet. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Uh, so it pushed and squeezed some snow into the valley, and it was, but we, we started the first day with snow on the ground and it just never stopped yeah it it seemed like it warmed up a little bit because we were all working so hard we we're shedding clothing yeah. but it was fun this was again grayson's first one and she was she had a really nice scarf on as i remember that honestly she wore a lot yeah i think i think that probably became her salvage scarf or something well it didn't it didn't it took a it took a hit <laughs> yeah. no doubt about it and, and and i remember uh this was early that you know some of the the crew weren't ready they were wearing uh, uh just you know single. athletic shoes you yeah know? and that was bad they i think they went out that that night and got got stuff because where we stayed was kind of fun it was about about four miles out of town yeah going up 220 a little place called the rose low mm-hmm. and the rose low was uh a motel 
Yeah. Not a hotel because we couldn't afford the homestead. Yeah, no, they yeah. didn't put us up in that. We were, they were still not sure if the yeah. show was going to make it. Yeah, so. well, and, and at that time, the, uh, the the stable was owned by the preserve, not the homestead itself. It was the Homestead Preserve, which is a, a development company. And that was before the homestead became like an Omni. It was bought. It's been through a couple of by like a bigger hotel yeah, but chain. This was now. owned by another company, and uh, and so we, you know, we couldn't uh, convince the production company because this was only our, I think, our fifth episode actual fifth episode and um the budget was pretty pr- pretty tight yeah so we didn't get to stay in the the nice place but that's okay the rose low provided a lot of uh, entertainment we yeah i mean it was like a 30 room motel so we effectively maybe. rented out the entire thing yeah. it was all black dog and what, 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 and all the rooms had themes what was your theme mine was uh oh, I can't like a country uh, out you know like deers and and in the woods thing, yeah. I think Ted had the Elvis room. That sounds that's yeah. how appropriate. Yeah, it was it was perfect. I don't remember my room having a theme. I do remember. <laughs> I do remember having a beer with Grayson at one one in the after evening of one of these days, and uh, I asked her out. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, no. and she let me down easy. She goes. I, 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 I think I'm too old for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, you were still pretty young. She then. wasn't yet. Uh, she was an older serious woman with her her now husband. And, yeah, and I was. Yeah, you know, I was shooting my shot. Uh, way to go, man. Way way to ask. And you I'm kind of now looking back now. It's almost cringy to bring that up because like she feels like a, a sister, well, you know, of like like family. And it's almost like I'm really glad things worked out the way they did. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, she's uh, well. Anyway, but, that might be why I can't remember what my room looks like. Yeah, I was no, too you're, nervous. You were. You <laughs> Hormones were, were <laughs> surging. It, may, it blinds you, by the way. I got to make a note. Uh, 27 minutes in. This is for future me. There's a picture that I will put in right now here of you and I in our long johns and and sweatshirts. We all sort of left our doors open for a few hours when we got back and just shared beers. Yeah, we went out. Went out. There was no restaurants or anything up there. So we're standing outside. I, I got my uh, hoodie on and, and my long johns. And, yeah, and my Crocs. Yeah, because <laughs> I remember. Yeah, that was a that was a good look. It was great, you and know. I was wearing the same thing. You know, it, we were hanging out, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Put that. One There's in something there. about misery. Uh, well, loves company. To, yeah, it does love company. Yeah, you know, we all we all were miserable together, so it was our common bond. It's fun, you know, and it was it was, and and anyway, this was a this was a pretty neat one, and so we we had a lot of stuff out of this that we needed to get out, and and we had again two days to do it we had uh, uh luckily uh, ec pace uh, was uh, up there going to be doing the demo so we know the pace crew and yeah. uh, they provided a lot of all the assistance that they could also they brought uh brought some pieces back for us which was yeah pretty nice. did they transport those trusses yeah 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 that was uh that was huge we say we we try to establish the it's a common uh plot point in shows like ours which is like you know we only have two days. The demo guys are coming. We got to hurry up. Sometimes that was said just for effect. This time it was real. Like yeah. It was coming down well, around us. When they were sympathetic, they knew we were there. We'd negotiated with yeah. them ahead of time. And uh, Yeah, it wasn't like we were getting yeah. chased out. But Well, I mean, and and again, they had a timetable too, so we had two days to do this, and we and we did. It was it was full on, though. Mm-hmm. The trusses were great. You know, uh, the, the, the excavator driver was uh, good at at pulling all the purlins and sheathing off. Oh yeah, the thumb and the how yeah. to back up for a second. How did we how did you land this job? Uh, the, did they the, reach the, out or they did, reached out to us. Okay, yeah. cool. Back then, I mean even more now, but back then uh, we were we'd been in business for what 12 2012 12 years mm-hmm. at that point so we, we were known so as a company black dog was and really we well were established. We, the pace got the uh, uh got the the contracted demo so they were they knew of us and they're local uh, roanoke based company yeah so we you know we had an inside track but then we had to negotiate with um with the homestead preserve guys mm-hmm. and you know and they were nice guys too they they saw the value of us coming in i, I can't remember uh, what we paid for the salvage fee on that but it wasn't huge yeah, uh, you know, for them it was uh, you're getting good exposure, and as long as you know we 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 get out of there with you know all of our digits and everything it would uh, would have been a good job for them, and and they were they were, again they were developers so they built a lot of houses and 
in that area. And there's some beautiful houses up on that on on in that resort, the preserve. Yeah. But, but the, a lot to come out. You were starting to say the trusses, a lot of wood. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of wood. We uh, I was going to start with the trusses. Go but, ahead. Um, and those were kind of fun. That this was kind of uh, you know Robert and your uh, thing yeah. because you know early on in this I tried to drive the I drove it. I didn't try to drive it. I didn't drive it well. The forklift. Robert called it a lull. Yeah, a which lull. is a brand name. It was what they. That's the lull, The lulls were the first extendable forklifts. In a, the law company, yeah. And then this was a, of course, this was a cat. Was this a, was a JLG. JLG. I wrote it down. It was a uh, JLG G six forty two A. Ooh, hot <laughs> dang! Brand new. It looked yeah, like. it was. It was good. And it was uh, United Rental. Yeah, shout out United Rental. Yeah, they their came. logo made it in the show. <laughs> yeah, that was early on. Big and big and bright. I, li- I like it. And they they were, they were a great company. But you know, you you went in with your forks and and you know. N- Got it free a and jostle, yeah. And of course, I got I got a ration that you know your boy can drive better than you. And I said, "Yep, he sure can." Robert and I both were mean to you in this episode. You were. I, I, I'm glad you you recognize that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I was part of my therapy. I'm trying well, to. It's part of re, 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 revisit my transgressions. You know, we didn't we didn't yell at each other. We gave each other crap. It was just passive aggressive. It was. It was. <laughs> yeah. And and we're, we've gotten better yeah. mostly. Yeah. And, but it was that's really what kind of made it work because of of our yin yang thing. Uh, and, and sometimes it, you know, it got a little personal and, and sometimes, uh, I mean, there's a couple episodes coming up that, you know, uh, it, it, what I said did not make the show, but I said it, you know, cause I was a little pissed off, Yeah. but you know, sometimes Ooh, you, you can have, yeah, that's a dirt. good one. It's a good one. Um, you're watching ahead, are you? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I remember it. It's one of those <laughs> things that it really is embedded in your, oh, your brain. Isn't it weird what sticks yeah, with you? Yeah, I was going to I was gonna hit him with something. I don't know what it was. I, Sawzalls, yeah. I remember. Oh, is it the funeral home? Yeah. Yeah. I've got stuff from middle school that rattles around in my head. Yeah. Once every yeah. Six, everybody does. It's going it's going to. You know, yeah. just what you do with it, just, you know, don't suppress it. Let it roll around and roll out. <laughs> Uh, laugh about it, move on. Laugh about it, and start a podcast. <laughs> this is, uh, this not is, only is this podcast, it's therapy. It's therapy, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry we have to bring we're you bringing in on you this. with us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so the, the trusses were enormous. They yeah. were, they were well, the main trusses of the building, and they were made from like eight by eights, ten by tens. Well, a couple of them were solid beams. Big there was timbers. two solid beam ones, and then the other ones were laminated, basically, like yeah. two bys. They're uh, like two by twelve. We finally sold those things. They came in on, uh, on a flatbed tractor trailer, and they went out on a, on a hot shot. Remember yeah. The, you remember the hot shots now? Big trailers, people drive around and deliver stuff. We call them hot shots. And no. Yeah, we've moved a lot of stuff with them. I mean, they'll, cool. they'll take a big load. There's, I mean, as long as it's legal. Uh, is it expensive? <laughs> Well, it's, you know, whatever it costs. Yeah. They do it for a living, so, you know, it's not cheap, but it's you can get it there. That's you can move the, anything Always anywhere. a problem when if yeah. this stuff is – if it's too big, it's hard to move. It costs a lot to move, and it's usually an, uh, a prohibitive factor on, on selling stuff because, you know, but right. this, these people wanted it, and it took us uh, – how long? Eight years to sell it? They were a fixture. In the yard they forever. Were. We probably moved them five times. Well, we moved them to a place where they got out of the way finally, yeah. and we're out of the weather. Set at the warehouse. But that was just a joke. I mean, there's other things in this thing that were just kind of kept you going. The stall doors, 40 of those. Right. So inside, as you said already, like 30 stalls or yeah. so in this building, and, yeah. and they each had a sliding door, and they each had walls made from what we then later deemed horse kick board. Right. Which is, you can guess why yeah. it was named that. Well, yeah, and we, you know, instead of giving it its species, which was probably oak, you know, it... it oak it, and... It, I remember planting some of that stuff later for bills. That was Some of it was pine and some of it was oak. Yeah, but it was hard. It was old. Yeah. And it... Uh, and when you, when you say horse cake board, sometimes there was a full uh, horseshoe mark yeah. in the board where a horse had kicked it. Uh, they definitely do a lot of chewing, on, yeah, on the tops of the walls were like all chewed. chewed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a nervous. Uh, your mom told me about what that was called, but it, uh, well, somebody will tell us. It was a nervous uh, behavior. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. a neuroses of some sort. It's uh, chewing stuff. So they put things like uh, hot sauce and 
and to, you know <laughs> to keep uh, them from eating. Tie, them up. Yeah, yeah, stop them from eating. <laughs> and you find some some south of the border horse that uh, the, loves that the, chili. <laughs> that loves top of Man, Did you eat that uh, that board the other day? It was awesome. <laughs> you know, so uh, you that, even sound like Mister Ed. That was <laughs> Wilbur. Uh, that was fun. Um, you know, speaking of mom, I remember going into this one because we knew we were salvaging. Well, a stables and uh, there was horse tack and stuff. I, I remember we tried to get her to be a part of this episode. Do you remember that? Kind of. Well, only vaguely, but or quickly did yeah. we ask her. But she she didn't want any part of it from from the first time we asked her. Well, I, you know, I can understand why. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's not for everybody. No, you know, and it's uh, you know you got your family out there. There's always a chance to you know say something, do something that that you should might you might look back later and say I wish I hadn't said that. Of course, that's why editing is a beautiful thing. We, yeah. we, this was a heavily edited show, by the way. Yeah. We, we would shoot for, I always say we shoot for five days to get 22 minutes. Which is true. It's pretty much, pretty much reality. God. The rest of it is on the floor or whatever, you know, the cutting room floor, the editing room floor. But the horse kick boards, and then uh, this was Grayson's first salvage job with us. Right. So I was used to working with you guys already. Right. It's not, we didn't always get the whole team together. Prior to the show, it was far more common for all five of us to go out at once we started filming. Once we start our, getting our the rhythm down and the and the storyline and the, you know if you did, couldn't make it like when Robert hurt his hurt his leg or his mm -hmm. knees and couldn't make a few episodes, you know we always had to we couldn't stop you know we had to play it yeah you know and and, uh, and <clears throat> because once you stop you lose continuity you lose time. And we had a we had to fill fill the bill. We signed the contract. We had to do the do the work. And but and so Grayson Grayson was pretty green. I mean, Grayson went to school at App State for I think sustainability, sustainable su sustainable studies, sustainable studies. And uh, if she was able to be on, she's got two little kids again. If she was able to join, we'd have her talk about it. But it became a neat fit because Grayson was like really spiritually aligned with black dogs like ethos. You know, right. she knew the mission. She knew why we were doing it. She was pure heart towards it all. And so, and a killer work ethic and can do attitude. So this was about as hard as a first job could get two yeah. feet of snow, unfamiliar environment, big, heavy stuff, tools. She's not used to using yet. I remember her like, cause when we, first said go let's start working it was her and i taking off all the doors and the tracks the sliding right stable doors and the rest of you guys went after the wooden oh, walls horse kick. and it was fun because I, I was i was basically working with her we had in, in the because of the age of the building all the fasteners were like square head you know so you couldn't just use a socket you had to use a wrench and spin it off and it just it was fun to things that i had and that we all probably thought was second nature it was interesting to have someone go well how do you do that yeah. Why do you do that? And like, oh. Well, yeah. also, one thing about this one, we couldn't use a cutoff wheel because of the sparks and the tender. Uh, this was a tender box. The hay floor. We we could have lit that thing on fire real easy. And that's one thing you don't one thing you don't want to do. And of course, the convenience of having the fire department just across the road was uh, reassuring. Yeah. Even though we weren't going to do what we but we weren't going to do that. You know, we didn't want to bring more attention to ourselves than was already there. Talk about bad press. That was, you know, <laughs> it's one way to Black get, dog comes to town and burns the place it down. Is, <laughs> it's one way to get it on the ground. It happens more than not, but it's done purposefully because, yeah. you know, you strike a match and before you know it, your, your, tax, your tax bill goes down. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, that happens a lot. There's an old building, an old house sitting on a priest's property, and you're paying – your tax is assessed as a residence, not agricultural. Mm -hmm. And so once that house is gone, the taxes go down because there's it's not there anymore. Nice. No yeah. property tax on something that's turned into out, ashes. Out of sight, out of mind. And these were going away. But the other things we did on this, uh, uh, found a piano. Robert found a pool table. Now, you, this was a funny dynamic between yeah. you two because Robert finds a pool table, and you're like, what are we going to do with this? It wasn't a pool table, by the way. It was part pieces of it a pool was, table. It was a Parts, yeah, it was a pool table once in once in its life. The slate was there, <laughs> yeah. but it was rough. Yeah, and dirty, and it had been taken apart a long time. Yeah. So, but, so, yeah, got that. You know, and the wishbone, which is uh, what, what might, might the they call bone. it, dog bone. Um, it, I think I just got rid of that thing last year. And that's the base of the table. It's that's, like a funky sort of Art Deco. Uh, right. It was, it's probably an AMF 
um, yeah. you know, uh, what, whatever AMF was stands for. American Manufacturing Company, actually. Yeah, instead of the other AMF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've alluded to that a few times. There's, uh, a, there's a couple AMFs, yeah. 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 Off you go, uh-huh. uh, but that was a uh, that was a you know it was again a little back and forth. Uh, you know, Robert, what are you doing with all this crap? Mike's quick pick it up before you know Mike. Mike comes gives in, in here and gives me crap. It was, it was it. great that people were talking about me even when I was wasn't there. That was in, <laughs> yeah. in reverence, you know, because it always happened the other way too, which Robert didn't hear either. So, oh yeah, well, and you go. Sorry, I stepped on you, but yeah. you went in the other room and found that piano and. I, I didn't remember A, and I, I not since have I seen someone that excited about a dirty old piano. You know, and I haven't been excited since. <laughs> <you know? laughs> they're they're out there, and I've I've there's used, so many. I've used parts of them, but it's just so heavy and so cumbersome. And you know what, pianos weren't meant to come apart. No, as you remember, you've you've had some some dealings in the past making a pi- making a shelf out of a piano, as I remember. Oh yeah, they are. Well, the whole point of the instrument is you know a, a, an acoustic instrument that works off of resonance needs to be solid solid there, there can't be yeah. any off vibration that changes the harmonics yeah of it. And, but this one was nice it was, i think it was tiger oak again it was really good it was, it was a good one and i had a project in mind for it so that'll come out in another episode yeah stay tuned we yeah. definitely turned this into something that, yeah. honestly one of the coolest builds you've you've come up that with. was that was that was a lot of fun but it took a long time to do it because time it just took a long time <laughs> yeah because yeah. so, i didn't know what the heck i was doing so i couldn't assign it to anybody and yeah anyway that's another story but well, so did some picking uh the uh the, the other thing that i got thrown under the 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 carriage with was the uh oh, the judy's hold on hold on before that the, on the note of the piano one of the best scenes in the entire episode uh we the the big extendable reach forklift was just small enough to drive into the main hallway under right. like a carport area. Yep. And we use that to extract the piano. And on the way out, I'm backing up the forklift. Right. The piano's on the forks and you're standing on the forks playing the piano like well, that wasn't, Dr. Dracula. That wasn't something. playing, you know. You <laughs> well, wonder what my mom, what I did with the money my mom gave me for piano lessons. Well, it was such a, because the, the, the caution light on the equipment is spinning. It's dark and the piano's so out of tune and you're banging on it. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> one of the incredible It was scene. a good visual. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it was the fifth episode that they said, okay, we'll, uh, we'll green light we got the, rest, show the rest of the season. Yeah. And it could have been that. Could have been that one scene where someone know, saw yeah. it and was like, "These guys are idiots," but they could be fun. I said, "We're you know, lovely idiots. You know? We're <laughs> yeah. idiots that people love. You know? that's, <laughs> right, lovable uh, idiots. Lovable idiots. There's a song about it. There's something American idiot or something. I want to be an American idiot. Yeah. That's, na, it. Na, 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 that's na, it. That's it. Was that Green Day? Or yeah, something? nailed yeah. it. How about that? Nailed it. Yeah, how about that? I mean, I'm I'm young still. But speaking of forklift, you had an incident. Yeah, and so there was a a tack room. Tack is what they call the horse stuff. That all the leather bits and straps. bridles and yeah. harnesses and all that kind of stuff in this this room. And it had a really cool beadboard at it, but it was piled up. All this leather and har- and harnesses were piled up. So I wanted some. Mm-hmm. You know, it's there. It's going to get thrown away. So let's throw some in a Judy. Yeah. This was another thing. The Judys were. In mint condition on yep. this. If you look at them, they were they look like they just came off the the factory floor. Unlike you, what they look like now, oh, which you is still the, have them. Oh yeah, yeah, we still got them. I mean, I, yeah. I've never seen casters of any kind last that long. Those were some good. <laughs> they were awesome casters. Yeah, uh, the Judys. Uh, they they lived through the whole series, uh, which is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. But they were young then, and then, of course, I put them up on the on the on the uh, pallet. So you brought we'll pay, lift. yeah, pay and I were up top, and you brought us some Judy's with the forklift yep. to load the tack into. Yep. And Mike Pay was just great. You know, he he worked he worked with us for a lot of, off and on for the first season. Yeah, you know, he had the he is a firefighter. He's a captain now. Captain, my captain, captain, captain. and uh, with the Roanoke Fire Department. And 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 so uh, I made, we load them to the gills. Load them to the way. gills, and and then I'm trying to back it out and and do a little little shimmy, and the thing falls off, and and <laughs> it was perfect. You know, I love seeing Robert's face, and then you guys. Well, what do we do that for? We might as well throw them on the ground. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. well, they made it one I, way or the other. Yeah, my statements at first made me uncomfortable because I'm like, you're just being mean to be mean. But then I did say, if you were going to do that, we might as well just throw just them out throw the window. Them, anyway. Throw them out now. Well, it you know you think you think this is unscripted by the way, so there was no yeah. hey Mike, 
you know, dump the dump the stuff. It just happens. Yeah. And, and that's what I always told them. Usually the to you, but it does just well, happen. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the go-to for Here I am throwing you under the bus It's okay. <laughs> it's all right, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. You know, people though. walk in the store and just say, hey, Mike, what would you break today? I said, you uh-huh. know, just uh, – it's just sti- hearts. It, it's still young. It's still early. <laughs> Stand by. That's what I always tell my my cameraman. They said, well, "This kind of not nothing's happening." I said, "Well, just keep your ham- your camera hot. Yeah, it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not planned. It just happens. <laughs> and that was the beautiful part of our, our our existence there. And then the last thing we pulled out of there, which the which is the carriage, the uh, the carriage elevator. The ha- oh well, the, and the haunted carriage. Well, first. the haunted carriage. Yeah, that was after the ele- well the elevator came. We you actually the used it. We used it to bring the carriage down. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's last ride. It was. <laughs> and, and these were kind of modern-day carriages, so they had drum brakes on them. And, and as we picked it up to, to pull it, it was, it was uh, extending the brake cable and applying the brakes. So we thought, you know, what's what's stopping this thing? And it was it was poltergeist, by the way, some, <laughs> some carriage driver that got run over by – you know, a couple of a couple of horses or something. <laughs> who knows? Who knows the history of that place? I mean, it I'm was, sure there's spirits. in there There's somewhere. no doubt. You know, we did. I didn't take my sage in there and, and clear it. That's, <laughs> I should have done that on a many occasions. Yeah, I've got it in my bag now. I got some sage. Well, in fact, the one you were mentioning that's coming up, where you and Robert and the, the haunted, oh, the, the Sawzall saga. There was definitely some spirits. There in that was. Building. There was. There's no doubt. Stay There's tuned, no, foreshadowing. But we, uh, you know, we did some, we got the, the, the lift down, which was really cool. It was nice, nice, clean platform. And then we had to, you know, get the heavy stuff. And that was, you know, that's, that's where I came in because I'm the high wire guy. You're the rigger, everybody, rig master, Everybody man. says, why do you do it? It says, well, because, you know, I've got more insurance than anybody. <laughs> well, know? and as you say all the time, don't do something well if you don't want to do it again if you don't want to do something don't be good at it yeah and that's <laughs> yeah. uh and and so but i was and even to this day i'm you know I, I will consult and sometimes do some high wire stuff but uh not as much you know because i'm i'm a lot more as mike would say a a, a frail flower what was it delicate yeah. flower delicate flower oh, mike right. mike pay y'all gave mike pay a ration that which was kind of funny Cause he's a he's a bruiser, you know. He's, he's oh yeah, he was being facetious. I like, know. I'm a delicate little flower. Well, yeah, he's the least delicate guy. I know. Well, <laughs> he's uh, built like a brick house. Uh, he, he is. He's a stout young man. Yeah, great guy though. But that was a, that was a fun one. That one finally that one sold to a guy that put it back into a barn. The elevator. The elevator. Wow. In um and I think in Texas. Cool. Um, it's coming to me. I I can't remember where, but I think it was Texas that it went and he. I think he sent us some pictures of it done, you know, and those are hard to do, you know. You got to put a lot of infrastructure in, and yeah, and to just do that. rigging all yeah. those pulleys in the attic, and well, we just sold another one. They say we couldn't find those anymore, and I bought I bought one from my my guy over in uh, Parkersburg, um, Petersburg, excuse me, Petersburg, Virginia, uh, American Tobacco Company, and I just sold it two months ago to, to somebody. He's, he hadn't picked it up yet, so. But he's paid for it, which is great. What's the ROI on an old elevator? Uh, you s- know, it's hard to say. You know, um, hopefully there's on the positive. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those those things. If you if you really put you put the numbers together, you probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, that's Black Dog's business. Uh, my luckily, life, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing we're in, still in business. To tell you the truth, <laughs> the only reason we did a lot of these jobs is because it was underwritten. Yeah, you know, by the network, and the, um, because you know they had to pay for things. They didn't pay for the salvage rights, but they had to pay for everything else. Yeah, because they know. needed it to happen. Yeah, it had to happen. So you know, that's we were living high on the hog, so to speak, uh, when we got on the road. And when we were successful, and it was a it was a rocking show, and uh, it was carte blanche, man. We 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 drank and ate like kings. It was we, ama- it was, yeah. yeah, it was amazing at the end how how quick it turned. Where you know we, we yeah <laughs> we peaked f- season five or six. I mean the production company's gold Amex was getting wore out. We did. We, we ate nice. We stayed in the nicest hotels. I remember in town. a couple of two thousand dollar dinners. Oh yeah, we drank heavily those days. One of your birthday up in Abingdon. Was, yes, was, comes to mind. I remember the job we did after that night of drinking, and I, 
every time the camera came to me, like, what are you doing? I'm just like, I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can't. Can you please leave me alone? It was so funny. <laughs> it was the worst TV it ever. Was, it was so funny. We I had mean, fun. Yeah. I know we had fun. Absolutely. I, I I enjoyed myself a lot, too. I got I got older during the, during the whole run of the thing, so... We all, I think we all expedited the process. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> working hard and playing hard. We, we did it both, but it was it was really fun. This was a great episode, uh, just full of stuff. Uh, the cold was a character. Uh, oh, I remember one. The uh, speaking of the cold, the production company had like a little easy up shelter pop yeah. up with the plastic walls. It was like yeah. one of the fully enclosed ones, and they had one of those Mister Heater, oh yeah, propane heat with the two burners that sat on top of the grill tank. And I remember they had it inside. Danny this Burton. vinyl tent, and the wind <laughs> blew the vinyl into the heater and damn near caught the uh, tent on fire. <laughs> and they that's were learning, they, too. Yeah, yeah, and that's where they, you know, we didn't have the show hauler at that time, so, you know, the big whale. Uh, so we didn't have any place to, to charge batteries, and that was the main thing. They would pull a generator out, and everybody, yep. everybody have their charging systems, charging banks going, and that would have been a, that would have been a tragedy. No kidding. You ever seen a lithium ion battery catch on fire? It's I pretty, haven't. pretty I've, exciting. I've seen them on YouTube, but that's about it. <laughs> I think that's all we got. Uh, Demo Company trusses. Ted was funny. Grayson's first stop. Uh, dropping the Judy's. Grayson had one line in this uh, episode, and, 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 and one was, and only line. And I was surprised. She was pretty shy. She didn't know what to. She didn't know what to think of this whole thing well and honestly same i had not yet really become i was getting a little more outspoken right yeah, cl- clearly in this episode <laughs> they were definitely waiting for you know they used uh robert and i was the and ted 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 always would fill in you know mm. good commentary he's a witty banter so to speak Ted's funny he, ted is his funny you know he's he's still funny by the way i saw him last week yeah we saw him at the oyster roast yeah navy that, oyster roast that's right it was good it was good man i don't know if you guys like oysters but Every uh, year, the Navy Reserve um, started in probably. She said the '60s. No, it started in the '40s, I think. It was after after Pearl Harbor, mm-hmm. and uh, and Pearl Harbor Day is December the um, December the seventh. Yes. Yeah. Nineteen forty-three. Three. I think it's forty-three. Forty-two. Yeah, because the war was already going, but that's what got yeah. us involved. Right. Yeah. And these were uh, Robert's uh, uh, father and all his shipmates and people around here. They they did an annual oyster roast. Cool. And so most uh, a lot of these <coughs> Robert's dad was in the Navy too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. cool. Yeah, he was a yeah. commander. And um, and so that we we get behind Black Dog became the place after a while. So we'd all get it back there and eat roast oysters and drink beer and sing and. You know, just have a grand old time in commemoration. It was fun. It's it's, it's yeah. interesting. You know, Quinn Thomas and um, a bunch of uh, Gary Powers and a lot of the guys. Gary Powers got a uh, 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 Shore Patrol Jeep. Yeah, like an old forties Willys. Yeah, it was that awesome. thing's awesome. He comes in and wheels his uh, his siren. And his, if anybody knows what Shore Patrol is, it was the it's the uh, a detachment of of your peers that that go around and patrol the streets of uh of your uh, your port that you're in and you know when you're in a fight or you're getting you know out of out of hand or they come and get you uh-huh. and hopefully they get to you quick enough to where they can get you back to the ship <laughs> <laughs> it, with so all your por- with all your parts uh-huh. you know you might be written up and you know put in the brig but i'd rather be put in a brig in america than singapore Oh yeah, you know. So you know. Oh yeah. So the the shore patrol did a lot of things. It was mainly to keep you out of trouble and and try to save you. But anyway, I don't know. Well, why that I was a, that appropriate because we were drinking and he drove up in the back it backyard. Was. It was a lot of fun. Threw the siren on. Yeah. Um. Well, Anything else? I, that's it for the episode. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Yeah. The the Roselow Hotel was just the the high point in my mind. Just the joshing around. It well, low low point turned high point. We've <laughs> had a couple of good. Hotels. We got to stay at the Homestead one of one of the times, and yeah. uh, and then we got to stay at a uh, Bluemont and Covington one time. We were doing oh, it was awful uh-huh. under construction. Oh, I remember. You know, that you one. had to call the clerk to get the get the key to open the door of your of your room of your room. We had to prop our doors open because otherwise we'd have to go borrow. the I remember key. Bob Nastasi, who was our one of our uh, producers at the time, calling David Orr up. He was the guy that that set all this, set all of our, our 
who was tells the production, the production manager, manager yeah. and just gave him a ration that this better never happen again. <laughs> you know, I'd have rather s- s- slept in the back of the truck than yeah. in that place. And it was cold too. So, yeah. but that wasn't the Rose Lowe. Rose Lowe's still there. Give them props. Um, they're still there and I'm sh- I, hopefully they're, they're thriving. But it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. And, and again, early on, still learning our bu- learning our business. Even though it was the ninth, supposedly, it was really the fifth. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all for me. What's going on at Black Dog for uh, coming into Christmas here? Yeah, Did you do anything? Yeah, uh, this weekend we're uh, which is what's the day? The fourteenth, fifteenth, fifteenth. Today's fifteenth. Yeah, uh, we're having a, a Saturday appreciation customer appreciation day. Then we have the dog bowl uh, market on Sunday. Uh, we've got uh, got a couple of musicians coming in. I think uh, Will Will Farmer and uh, I think uh, Will Seymour. William Seymour is awesome. Yeah, he's he's a really talented Roanoke guy. Right, um, plays all over the t- over the place. Yeah, he's we'll playing a, this weekend. Uh, yeah, on Sunday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's it's a lot of fun. There's your mom calling. Um, yeah, it's just uh, we're 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 stoked. We're we're stocked for Christmas. Uh, you know, if nothing else. Uh, Gift certificates are always available mm-hmm. for uh, folks you love that you want to want to. You don't know what to give them. Give them this because we got everything. By the way, we got it all. If, and if we don't have it, you don't need it. Black Dog is fantastic for last minute gift shopping. Yeah. I use it. All my friends do that. It's it's great. Yeah, I shop there quite a bit. You yeah, know? of course I got a credit there. Yeah, it's called, <laughs> it's called your life, your debt, <laughs> and uh, and then go to uh, either. CVS, Walgreens, or Rite Aid at 10 o'clock on Christmas Eve. That that makes you really sharpen your your uh, your giving because there's nothing left, by the way. Oh, I was struck. What are you getting at? Uh, yeah. Stocking stuffers. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, that's re- true last minute. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm obviously very – I plan a lot for, for the holidays, so uh, I don't. Yeah, mom, mom was always great. I, once I learned that Santa was – sorry, well, I'm not going to – Santa is not real. <laughs> yeah, okay. just, Let's go ahead and cut to the I chase, kids. Just say it. These people are grown up. Yeah, I don't know why. I was like, maybe there's a – yeah. No. No. Once I learned that Santa wasn't real, I realized that, no offense, mom had most to do with most. Except for the the gifts, there was really – like, give me a go-kart one year. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Never, yeah. Never mind. I gave you the fun stuff. Yeah. The stuff – yeah. <laughs> well, the stuff that no. you <laughs> – the stuff you can get hurt on. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, the best. Oh, that's a good one. What's yeah. that? A motorcycle. Dirt bike, scooter, yeah. go-kart. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Santa. Yeah, well, most of it was for me, but, you know, so I always yeah. buy something you like and hope somebody else likes it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of anything. Lift art um, doing all right? Yeah. The shop's great. Um, got a – real sprint here coming into end of christmas i'm going to try to take a week between christmas and new year's off all right try to finish some stuff going into it let me know how that works out i'm pretty good actually about m- making myself take time off it's nice when i think uh, i know the boss pretty well i think you millennials have got it worked out you know i mean we were uh, yeah. growing up it's working six seven days a week and it's and not healthy it's not healthy but you know y'all are y'all are doing it, doing it your way it's your world now you know, I, it's I, I love the it's a generation that pays more attention to mental health, yeah. and you know, that yeah, kind of thing. And well, and, that, and that's part of it. You know, is is workaholism. Workaholism is, is not not a good way to. Although sometimes it's all you got. Well, and here I am. I've I've worked at my shop until uh, seven or eight, just about every day this week. So that's called uh, business ownership. So if you want to go shopping, go to liftarkstudios dot com. Well, and I'm making those cool, uh, put a picture in right now, uh, these cool metal um, Christmas trees that you can buy at Black Dog. I've been uh, just about once a week. I restock you yeah, guys with them, so yeah, I'm they're, glad they're, they're selling. They're flying off the shelf, so to speak. Uh, you can go to stickyglass.com. Yeah, buy and, some of Grace's glass. Uh, yeah. uh, also, a uh, really good Christmas present there. Yeah, uh, she's speaking got, of you know ornaments. and The ornaments are killer. I mean, she sent a box for me to sell, and... Uh, they're awesome. Just hand blown by Grace Whiteside, and they are awesome. She's awesome. Hell yeah! Uh, Merry Christmas. Let's see. Uh, we'll do we'll do one more of these. I, I would imagine maybe two before Christmas. Yeah. I don't know. But well, anyway. we'll hit them on Thursdays. Uh, and BlackDogSavage dot com. You can uh, buy them pickles, jelly, jams, hats, shirts, sweat sweat hoodies. 
Speaking of hats and shirts, what are you repping today? Uh, I'm repping two things. One is the uh, uh, Heart Pine Company. Oh, cool. I like the logo. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a new one. And then this is nothing. I don't think. I assume they sell wood. Yep, Heart Pine. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a cool company. <laughs> and we do a little bit of business with them. And also, uh, Ironclad Bourbon. Yeah. We went to a, this is, this is I've had this probably eight years. We remember we went to the uh, the bourbon tasting festival over at the. Oh, at the Civic yeah, Center. Yeah. We were celebrity we were, judges. We were celebrity judges. For yeah. the Virginia Wine and Spirits Convention. It was awesome. Well, uh, met these guys, and they're out of Richmond, I think. And uh, their bourbon was young. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm, uh, I haven't had any <laughs> if, sense. If you know bourbon, you know what that means. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, uh, bourbon gets better when it gets old, just like old people. It's like you, man. That's right. I'm getting better. I'm just like an old bourbon, <laughs> just a little sweet. You only need a little bit. And a little, and a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take it, take it, take it yeah. with a little bit of salt. Drink responsibly. Drink, yeah, drink Mike responsibly. <laughs> well, listen, we're uh, we're at our hour. That's it. Um, as always, like, rate, subscribe. It seems as though uh, we have a fervent, uh, small as of yet, but fervent audience. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Any, yeah, we appreciate it. As always, leave a, drop us a line in the comments on the YouTube version of the podcast. L- ask us your questions. Give us some feedback. Seems like most people, after we asked for feedback last week, said we like it just the way it is. So Okay. Well, I mean, that's all we got to do. That's the only thing we can do anyway. We're just asking that to be be polite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like we were going to change I it. Mean, it's, <laughs> no. I mean, if you want me to dance or, you know, you know, wear a wig or something, that's yeah. – I, well, I, I do have a Bob Ross We'll wig. start a Patreon and they can pay extra for uh, There that. you go. I'll, I'll, uh, and also, Cameo. I'm on Cameo. Uh, you can get a personal greeting to anybody that you want on Cameo. Cameo? What better Christmas present yeah. than to get get Dad here to? Uh, and usually I'm just walking around talking, so just like this, it's uh, it's fun, you know. I've, I've only done four of them, and, and so it's not it's not obviously it's not catching on like wildfire, <laughs> but you know, uh, some people like it, so it might. Yeah, you never know. Well, thank you guys for joining us. This has been the Black Dog Savage Podcast, Season One, Episode Nine, The Homestead Stables. And I'm Mike Whiteside. I'm Tay Whiteside. We'll see, see you next you week when it goes around one more time. All right, we can put these notes away. Mm-hmm. I've been keeping all my podcast notes in the same notebook. Even, well, good. even the first six we did. Then that means you can go back and yeah. turn it into a book. Yeah. That's fine. See ya. Ho, ho, ho.